السلام عليكم hello everybody today our video about Doppler ultrasound for evaluation of scrotal pain introduction testicular torsion is the second most common cause of acute scrotal pain behind epididymo or chytes patients often present with acute onset testicular pain however occasionally patients may have intermittent pain and relief extending over a few days. Ultrasound is a modality of choice for diagnosis. Sonographic diagnosis of torsion is usually associated with absent, abnormal, or reduced flow in the testis on the same side as the vein. Other less common conditions may result in a pattern of absent, abnormal, or reduced blood flow to the testis which must be identified for appropriate management, as many of these diagnoses don't require surgical management. Learning Objectives 1. Review normal vascular anatomy of the testis and the sonographic appearance of normal testicular blood flow. 2. Recognize abnormal Doppler ultrasound patterns of testicular blood flow. 3. Describe common and uncommon conditions that result in a pattern of absent, abnormal, or reduced blood flow to the tests. This presentation provides a case-based review of Doppler flow abnormalities in the tests. Testicular arterial supply Testicular blood flow is supplied primarily by the testicular differential, and cremastric arteries, which pass through the inguinal canal with a vast difference and paminiform venous plexus making up the spermatic cord. The differential and cremastric arteries primarily supply the epididymis and extratesticular tissues, but they also supply the testis through anastomosis with the testicular artery. Technique of Doppler ultrasound of the scrotum Place the patient in a supine position with a towel under the scrotum for support. Use adequate gel to ensure there is no air within the regional folds of the scrotal skin. Use a high-frequency linear array transducer. Obtain longitudinal and transverse images of both testis and epididymis. Doppler ultrasound technique Optimize for low velocity, low volume flow with low wall filters and low pulse repetition frequency. Perform spectral Doppler ultrasound to assess arterial and venous waveforms. Perform power Doppler ultrasound when flow is challenging to identify. Consider scanning the asymptomatic side First, to optimize setting. Avoid adjusting the settings when moving from one testis to the other, as comparison of images of the testis can add diagnostic value. Here, the picture on the left is ultrasound image shows a normal testis with an echogenic mediastinum. The picture on the right is an ultrasound image shows symmetric echogenicity and color Doppler flow. So the examination protocol should always include obtaining both grayscale and color Doppler transverse scrotal images to allow for comparison of the tests. Normal testicular Doppler ultrasound appearance. The image on the left is the intratesticular arteries have low vascular resistance with low impedance and a large amount of anti-grade diastolic flow on this ultrasound image. The picture on the right is the extratesticular arteries may have low or high resistance. This high resistance waveform in the spermatic cord demonstrates a sharp narrow systolic peak and little or no diastolic flow on this ultrasound image. Doppler flow patterns to recognize. Number one, 
absent. It means no detectable flow within the testicular parenchyma. Here you have to evaluate for arterial and venous waveforms throughout the symptomatic tests. Carefully assess with power Doppler ultrasound to confirm lack of flow. Don't mistake noise as flow. Number two, abnormal. Compare with the asymptomatic tests. Change in intra-testicular flow to high resistance flow. Increase the flow is usually depicted with an inflammatory or infectious process, but may represent reperfusion changes after intermittent torsion. Initially, increased flow may change to decreased or absent flow over time. Number three, reduced. It may be acute or chronic. Acute changes are found with intermittent torsion or infarcts. Chronic changes are associated with atrophy from a prior ischemic or inflammatory event. Barbus tardus waveforms may be present if there is proximal stenosis. Absent flow, testicular torsion. Case 1, abrupt onset of severe left testicular pain in a 16 years old boy. Images on the left shows ultrasound image shows normal flow in the unaffected right testes below is an ultrasound image shows a normal right spermatic cord on the right up is the ultrasound image shows an enlarged left testes with absent spectral and color doppler flow below is an ultrasound image shows a torsion not of the left spermatic cord. Torsion of at least 540 degree is necessary for complete arterial occlusion. Management manual detorsion was performed in the emergency department with immediate relief of pain, followed by bilateral orchiopexy. Testicular torsion. Testicular torsion is the most common cause of absent flow at Doppler ultrasound. The bell clabber deformity or the abnormal fusion of the tunica vaginalis on the distal spermatic cord instead of the posterior lateral testis allow the testis to twist along the spermatic cord constricting the vascular supply and resulting in time-sensitive ischemia of testicular tissue. The testicular salvage rate is 80% to 100% if surgery is performed within 5 to 6 hours of the onset of pain. This image is a color Doppler ultrasound image shows a swirling flow in the torsion knot of the left spermatic cord, a critical finding to identify especially when flow in the testis is relatively preserved.